Collector of the transistor to emitter and back to negative of this battery. Okay. So as current is flowing through PH two now, north pole will be developed in this PH two. So south pole of this rotor, which was vertically here, will be attracted towards this particular PH two, so that the rotor will have this position with south pole here. Right now, this will continue till this end of this pulse. Whenever this PL two will go low, then this Q two will go off, and at that time this PL three is becoming high. That means if we are applying this PL three to base of this transistor Q three, then Q three will become on. And as Q three is turned on, current will flow through this PH three, and the path of current will be from positive end of battery through this. PH three through this um, collector to emitter of this transistor and back to negative of this battery. So as current is flowing through this PH three now, north pole will be developed across this PH three, and this will attract the south pole of this rotor, which was at this particular position. So it will be attracted at this particular position again. this will continue till 360 degree whenever instead of q3 again this pl1 will come so q1 will be turned on and the rotor will rotate to ph1 and it will continue this south pole will continue moving from ph1 to ph2 to ph3 again to ph1 ph2 ph3 that means the rotor is rotating in counter clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction now if you want to reverse this direction in if this is the initial position and this pl1 instead of applying to transistor q1 if you will apply it to transistor q3 then current will flow through this ph3 with this path from positive through ph3 through this transistor back to this so n pole north pole will be developed on ph3 of this stator and the south pole of this rotor will be attracted towards this and if after this pulse if you are applying this pulse to transistor q2 then current will flow through ph2 and north pole will be developed across this this south will be attracted towards this and the rotor will rotate in now clockwise direction so if you want to reverse the direction of rotation then you have to reverse the uh, pulse sequence if your pulse sequence is uh, this pl1 pl2 pl3 if you are applying this sequence to q1 q2 q3 then the motor will rotate in counter clockwise or anti clockwise direction if you will apply this pl1 pl2 pl3 to q3 q2 q1 and again q3 q2 q1 then the motor will rotate in clockwise direction and this will be decided by this timing and base drive circuit so whether uh, to apply the phase sequence as 1 2 3 or 3 2 1 uh, this pl1 pl2 pl3 and these pulses will be received from this so i hope uh, you have understood uh, this the major drawback of this um, particular unipolar um, uh, brushless dc motor is that these transistors they are not having any diodes connected across these so they are called as the feedback diodes so feedback diodes are not present as well as there is no freewheeling diode also so as feedback diodes and freewheeling diodes are not present because these the purpose of this feedback diodes and freewheeling diodes is to uh, send the energy back to the supply which is stored in the windings 
so uh, in these windings the energy stored uh, whenever uh, the energy stored that energy you want to give it to back to the supply so that will be given back through this uh, diodes and if these diodes are not present so in unipolar these diodes are not present so the energy stored across these uh, windings it will not be fed back to the supply so that means these energy uh, should be low so that's why uh, the limitation of this unipolar brushless dc motor is that these motors they are available only for the power levels less than 100 watt and if you want to operate the motors more than 100 watts then the power which is uh, um, de developed across these windings will be high and you need to feed it back to the supply and that's why these feedback diodes or prevailing diodes will be necessary and uh, for that purpose they are using the bipolar brushless dc drives okay so i hope you have understood uh, this uh, unipolar uh, brushless uh, dc motors so we'll um, i don't think time will permit us to complete uh, bipolar brushless dc motor but we'll start it uh, if um, um, will uh, time will not permit us will continue it in next class but by that time we'll try to continue and uh, finish off this okay so in bipolar brushless dc motors the stator winding is same rotor winding is same the only difference is instead of only three transistors there are now six transistors are there so that's why it is a bipolar so you can change the direction uh that's why uh, this um, um, bipolar and there are feedback diodes also used so feedback diodes they will uh, feed the energy back to the supply so um, uh, these uh, uh, motors can be used for high power applications which are more than 100 watts and in uh, this is the base drive card and control unit and uh, the sensor which is used here is the hall effect sensor so this is the difference so if um, bipolar brushless dc motors are asked in the exam then you have to draw this particular constructional diagram and you have to explain operation of three phase uh, bridge inverter which is operating in 120 degree mode okay so let us start uh explaining uh, this uh, operation so in bipolar brushless dc motor it uses three phase bridge inverter with feedback diodes the feedback diodes are used to return the inductive energy to the back to the supply and the rotors uh, rotor uses to return the inductive energy to the supply okay uh then the rotor uses the hall effect sensors to sense the uh, position so position of this uh, rotor will be sensed by this hall effect sensor now in fact three hall effect sensors and a magnet ring from a rotor Uh, uh from a rotor position sensor the hall effect sensors are 120 degree electrical apart from each other and magnet ring is mounted on the rotor shaft and revolves with the rotor the bipolar brushless dc motor circuit is this entire circuit diagram okay now if you uh, want to explain this three phase bridge inverter which is operating in 120 degree mode the operation is like that the switching of each transistor it occurs in response to the rotor position sensor 
the transistors are triggered in sequence q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 and q6 now each transistor will conduct for 120 degree and any time two transistors conduct and each pair conduct for 60 degree now the torque reversal is achieved by phase shifting the transistor based joy signals by 180 degree right so um i elaborate it uh, more this three phase bridge inverter operation so now this three phase bridge inverter it is having two halves this is uh, upper half i can say which is consisting of q1 q3 and q5 transistor and this is the lower half which is consisting of q4 q6 and q2 transistor so this circuit we can divide in two equal halves one is the upper half and another is the lower half now the condition in this 120 degree operation is that one transistor will conduct for uh from upper half and another transistor will conduct from lower half in order to complete the current path so in order to complete the current path two transistors will be needed to conduct one from upper half and another from lower half so this is one condition and another condition is that no two transistors on same lane this is one lane this is second lane and this is third lane so if q1 and q4 if these two are on then it will short circuit this supply if q3 and q6 are on simultaneously it will short circuit the supply by this path if q5 and q2 are on simultaneously it will short circuit the supply so q1 and q4 they are not allowed simultaneously q3 and q6 are not allowed simultaneously as well as q5 and q2 are not allowed simultaneously so one from upper half and one from lower half so what will be the combination with q1 either you can connect, turn on q2 or q6 then with q3 it will be q2 or q4 with q5 it will be either q4 or q6 right so this will be the sequence so now each transistor which is operating for 60 degree because it is a cycle of 100 360 degree if we are dividing it in equal six parts then each part will be of 60 degree that means each transistor will conduct for 60 degree period now let us start our operation from say q1 and q2 they are operating so if q1 and q2 they are on then current will flow from this positive of battery through this q1 collector emitter through this particular stator winding and through this particular stator winding again it will come back as q2 is on current will flow back to this so this will be the path now this will continue till 60 degree now after 60 degree if q1 is conducting continuously then q2 is going off so along with q1 q3 q5 cannot conduct so q4 cannot conduct q2 just it has gone off so along with q1 only q6 can conduct so q1 and q6 will conduct for next 60 degrees and current path will be from this positive of battery through this collector emitter through this stator winding then through this stator winding through q6 back to negative so now q1 has completed its quota of 120 degree as it has conducted for two intervals so 120 degree mode so each transistor will conduct for maximum 120 degree that means two intervals so q1 has completed its quota so again this q6 is uh, conducting from previous cycle so along with q6 one from upper half q3 is now cannot conduct q1 just it has stopped so along with q6 q5 will conduct so now q6 and 
Q5 will start conducting. So current will flow from this to this, then to this winding, then Q6 is there. So through this, this, and back. So this will continue. Now, this will continue for further 60 degree. After further 60 degree, this Q6 has completed its quota of two intervals or 120 degree. So Q6 has to go off. So along with Q5, now which device can conduct? Q4 can conduct. So Q4, uh, Q4 and Q5 will conduct and current will flow by this path. So this, then you can explain all these, right? So one, two will conduct, then uh, if one is going off, then two, three will conduct. So two, three, two, two will go off. So three, four will conduct. So three, four, three has completed. So four, five will conduct. Then five, six will conduct. Then again, six will conduct, six, one will conduct. So you can start from any uh, two pair. Uh, one, six, you can start. Six will go off. So one, two. Then 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 1, again 1, 2. So uh, this, uh, like this, you can uh, complete. And uh, current will flow in two of these windings. And uh, this uh, north pole uh, will be developed in this uh, two windings. And the south pole will be attracted towards that. And uh, it will rotate the rotor in the same manner as that of unipolar. And this rotation will be sensed by this, uh, position of this rotor will be sensed by this particular Hall effect sensor. And uh, this uh, position will be given to this particular uh, base drive circuit. And this base drive circuit will decide now which transistor pair will operate for the next 60 degree interval, okay? So as each phase conducts twice in a cycle, better utilization of stator windings takes place as compared to unipolar drive. So the bipolar type of uh, brushless DC motors, they are suitable for high performance servo drives and also for the ratings higher than 100 watts. And now, the uh, diodes which are connected across these transistors, they will feed the energy back to the supply from this stator winding. So whatever energy stored across this stator winding, that will be fed back to this uh, supply through these feedback diodes, okay? So I hope you have understood this. Uh, then uh, um, uh, let us see the uh, comparison first. So comparison uh, of uh, brushless DC motors with conventional DC motors. So brushless DC motor and conventional DC motor. So question may be asked in the exam, uh, compare the brushless DC motor with conventional DC motor. So these are the different points. I'll um, elaborate it one by one. So in brushless DC motors, electronic commutation uh, uh, is used with hall position sensor uh, or it may be the simple sensor also um, which is of uh, photo uh, transistor and uh, light uh, emitting diode so it is referred as optocoupler so it may be optocoupler sensor position sensor or hall effect sensor but along with that, there will be electronic commutation. Whereas in conventional DC motor, mechanical commutation circuits along with brushes are used. Here, no brushes are there. And here, brushes are there. So as brushes are there, there will be a periodic maintenance in conventional DC motor. And as brushes are absent in uh, brushless DC motor, so there will be less maintenance in brushless DC motor. And a controller is always necessary because this uh, um, uh, position of rotor, you will be uh, detecting by the position sensors, maybe Hall effect sensor or maybe the optocoupler. And that you have to apply 
uh, based on that you have to apply the triggering pulses or base pulses to the transistors and for that purpose a controller circuit will be always needed in case of brushless dc motor whereas these controllers are required only if variable speed is required in case of conventional dc motor okay and in conventional dc motor efficiency is moderate due to the losses whereas that efficiency is high in brushless uh, dc motors now output power is high and the reduced size due to the uh, superior thermal characteristics whereas in case of uh, conventional dc motor it uh, operates on moderate uh, output power and the armature heat is dissipated in air gap which puts limit on the output power and the size then speed torque characteristic curve it is moderately flat and at higher speeds brush friction increases which uh, reduces the shaft torque whereas in this type uh, brushless dc motor the speed torque curve is almost flat which is which enables the operation at all speeds with the rated load okay then the rotor inertia is low due to permanent magnets in case of brushless dc motor whereas high rotor inertia is there which limits the dynamic performance of conventional dc motor then in conventional dc motor the speed range is lower but speed range is higher in brushless dc motor and in brushless dc motor electric noise generation is less because brushes are absent and in uh, brush uh, uh, normal or conventional dc motor the arcs in the brushes generate the noise as brushes are there there will be friction and arcs will be there and due to that noise will be generated and uh, as the um, uh, assembly external assembly needed is very less in conventional dc motor the cost is very low whereas the cost of brushless dc motor is high because of the costly permanent magnets and the again the position sensors and the electronic circuitry which we have to use so because of that again the cost of this uh, will be increased then the control is complex and expensive as uh, we have to control uh, the um, uh, depending on the position of rotor you have to control the uh, transistors and uh, which will control the phase sequence and uh, that's why the control will become complex and expensive whereas here there is no control required so control is very simple and inexpensive even if you want to control the speed and uh, the because of this uh, brushes and all the life of this motor is uh, shorter again field winding is there uh, brushes are there so life of this motor is uh, conventional dc motor is shorter whereas life of this uh, brushless dc motor is longer so i hope uh, you have understood these uh, differences and you will be able to reproduce it in the examination okay now let us see the characteristics of uh, brushless dc motor so if we we'll draw the equivalent circuit of brushless dc motor it is of this nature this ra is there and uh, armature resistance and uh, this uh, you can show uh, back emf which is proportional to uh, omega uh, then uh, this is the supply voltage and ia is flowing so this is the equivalent circuit of brushless dc motor so um, this is simple uh, representation equivalent circuit this ra is the stator resistance while e represents the back emf which is proportional to the rotational speed omega now neglecting the voltage drop across the transistors 
uh, assuming that the transistors are ideal one the voltage equation can be written as this v is equal to you apply kvl for this so v is equal to iara plus e so this v is equal to iara plus e that is the voltage equation now e is directly proportional to kb into omega this we have seen for kb into uh, omega uh, where kb is the uh, back emf of this motor so uh, your ia you can uh, find it from ia is equal to or ira is equal to v minus e divided by ra or v minus this kb into omega divided by ra so this ia will be equal to v minus e upon ra or v minus kb omega upon ra now the torque is directly proportional to armature current and hence torque is proportional to ia that is torque is equal to kt into ia so now uh, kt is the torque constant and uh, this uh, kt uh, sorry this torque you can write it as uh, kt into ia ia you can substitute it from this ia is equal to v minus kb omega by ra so torque is equal to kt into v minus kb omega by ra so this is first equation let us say and from this equation you can draw this characteristics uh, torque speed characteristics so it shows that uh, this equation shows that as speed increases torque decreases if speed is increasing then as this term is increasing torque is reducing whereas if voltage is increasing then torque will increase now if uh, um, uh, speed is uh, increasing then torque decreases linearly for constant voltage and as voltage increases torque increases at constant speed now this you can see from this particular graph so this is the speed torque characteristics so it is uh, almost a flat characteristics for different values of voltages if uh, v1 is greater so if you are increasing the value of voltage then torque will be increase speed will increase okay so these characteristics will be increased and the slope of this you can find it from kt kb by ra where kt is the um, kt and kb these uh, are the constants kt and kb so and ra is also constant so kt kb by ra will represent the slope of this particular line and these end points these are called as the stalling torque whereas these end points they are called as the no load speed now this stalling torque you can calculate when the speed is zero on this axis speed is zero on y axis if you want to plot this particular point intersect then here speed is zero so if you will substitute speed value as zero in this particular equation this torque will be kt into v upon ra so that is the stalling torque so stalling torque you can calculate by kt v by ra right just by substituting omega equal to zero in this equation number 1 and if you want to find this no load speed on x axis y intercept is zero so uh y intercept is your torque so torque will be zero so if torque is zero this ra on this side kt on this side will be zero so that means v is equal to kb into omega from equation 1 so if torque is zero so from this you can calculate the value of omega as v is equal to kb omega so v by kb will be value of omega so from this equation 1 you can calculate these both these values of stalling torque and no load speed and they are given by equation number 2 and 3 so i hope uh, you have understood uh, all these uh, then the overall torque speed characteristics you can see it is a flat one and it is similar to that of the conventional dc motor so that's why it is referred as the brushless dc motor now 
there are many advantages of uh, this uh, brushless dc motor so we'll discuss one by one so due to the absence of brushes and commutator they require uh, practically no maintenance then second advantage is that they have long life third advantage is its operation is highly reliable next is they have low inertia and friction next they have low radio frequency interference and noise hence the operation is noiseless next due to low inertia and friction they have faster acceleration and can be uh, can run at much higher speeds up to 30000 rpm and more and because of the armature windings are on stator the cooling is much better and due to feedback diodes the efficiency is as high as 75 to 80% in case of bipolar uh, type of uh, brushless dc motors then a uh, fairly linear output torque uh, against input current characteristics requires less or no maintenance there is no danger of explosion and no possibility of radio frequency radiations which are produced due to arching or arching in the brushes of conventional dc motors and uh, these motors they do not produce any commutator particles or gases uh, okay so these are the major advantages of uh, brushless dc motors but uh, they are having few drawbacks as well so the major disadvantages of uh, brushless dc motors they are very few that is the requirement of rotor position sensor and the requirement of complicated power electronic circuitry so that's why the initial investment or initial cost of this entire dc brushless dc motor it becomes high that is the only drawback of this motor otherwise it is having the major advantages and that's why the applications of these brushless dc motors are the unipolar brushless dc motors they are used for applications which are of lower power that is up to 100 watts only so like turn table drives in record players spindle drives in hard disk drives in computers and various low cost instruments and computer peripheral equipments these motors are also used for tape drive for video recorders instruments and control system and they have also applications in the field of aerospace gyroscope motors uh, gyroscope motors and biomedical instruments like artificial heart pumps and also these motors are used in robotics machine tools electrical vehicles servo drives and other battery operated devices and as it is used in electric vehicles that's why we have covered this in the last unit so in the last topic uh, we'll be covering the um, electric vehicles and in that electric vehicles also we are using this brushless dc motors so this is the major application of this brushless dc motor and other uh, battery operated devices also you can use this brushless dc motors okay so we have seen this comparisons so i hope you have understood this uh, brushless dc motors so let us stop here today's discussion so thank you bye good day